Uh, welcome to the show, both of you. I'd like to start with Lassa. Yes. Because uh, you are the reason why Elementor started building with Lego. I know you didn't have a dark age, but have you always been interested in, as interested in building as you are now? Uh, yes, I have been in building with Lego bricks all my life. Uh, as a child, I just followed the building instruction. I did not build my own creations as I do now. Uh, when I built a Lego set, I put it on the shelf and then I played with the minifigs. Uh, but it changed uh, around uh, 2009 when I was 14 years old. I built my first block. It was a haunted house with ghosts and skeletons. And uh, then I found out it was much more interesting to build my own creations uh -huh. instead of just follow, following the building instruction. Yeah. And uh, I still build uh, sets sometimes, but I prefer building my own creations. Do you remember which the first set you had? Which one that was? Uh, I was maybe one year old when I got my first Lego set. It was uh, Lego Primo. And, oh, they, okay. and later I also had Lego Duplo. In uh, 2001, uh, when I was six years old, the first Lego Bionicle came. And as a child, uh, Lego Bionicle was uh, my favorite toy to play with. Really? Uh, yes, but today I'm a little ashamed about it. I know oh. I don't like Bionicle. <laughs> okay. uh, today I prefer to build with real Lego bricks with dots. Okay, let's let's uh, let's have uh, we have established that. Um, <laughs> do you know how many Lego sets you own now? Uh, no. I don't collect Lego sets any longer. I still have my collection of old Lego sets from the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, but when I buy modern sets, I only buy them to use the bricks to build my own creations. And then sometimes I also buy Lego sets to get the minifigs. I like minifigs very much, and uh, I'm a minifig collector. I have more than 3,000 different minifigs in my collection. Well, that makes two of us. I also really like the minifigs. Uh, I know that you were named Nerd of the Week uh, by an engineering magazine uh, in September 2007 when you were 11 years old. Uh, 12. 12 years old, yes, okay. Uh, so it's no big surprise you like Lego, but I met them. Uh, the year before that, in 2006, you both went to a Lego exhibition hosted by the Danish club, Big Band, uh, and that turned out to be a very important experience. What was it that made you realize that this was something that not just us, but also you? We start spending most of the time on. In the beginning, I was just a mom who wants to do the best for my son. Who oh, loved me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. Really positive, yeah. Yeah. In the beginning, I was just a mom who loved who wants to do the best for my son. He loved Lego, so we went to Lego exhibitions. And um, for the first many years, it was uh, only for lesson that I went to those Lego exhibitions and other airport events. But, uh, in 2010, uh, we decided that we also want to exhibit it. It looks fun, and I've seen all the other adults they could build, so why not me? Yeah. And, and I want to participate in, in the Lego World of Cake. Okay. So then we, we both decided that now we will build blocks, and, and then the changes. Yeah. Um, so you, not, you joined the lab shortly after this, and yeah. became an A4. And I guess that meant that the brick collection went from being Lasters to Lasters and Anamectus. Uh, what was the first set you bought for yourself? Uh, it took so some years. Uh, it was Les's collection in the beginning. Okay. Uh, it, it, it changed when we started to build box because then I need to, to uh, buy bricks uh, from the box and uh, Les couldn't afford that it was just a kid. So yes. I also need to, to buy for him. Uh, the first set uh, I got, which was mine, was Mark's uh, brick. But I don't think I would have bought it at that time, but I have helped with an Lego event in a shopping mall, and then I have the but later I bought the Okay, so the modular buildings. Yes. Really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you did start building blocks, that's what, as you said, that was a big change. Did you start building together right away? Uh, we have always helped each other. When we are building, we are sitting in the same room at the same table. Uh, and we don't have space enough uh, uh, to build on the two uh, big layouts at the same time. So when we are building a big layout, we have to build it together. Uh, yeah. Of course, we don't have space enough. Uh, we have to collaborate. Yes. Yeah. Um, how do you collaborate? Do you share the building work evenly, or is one of you expect, expert on one thing and some of the other one expert on other things? When we build together, I think. Yeah. 
but we're going to get it. Even better. Oh, so I, don't, I know the planning. Uh, of, make sure that we put on the planning. I'm looking very much into the overall expression of the building uh, and uh, the colors. I look very much into the colors, which colors are we going to use for the, for the layout. And make sure that we uh, agree about what we're going to build before we start. Mm. And uh, that is much better to uh, to just go down on top techniques and building techniques and you know so all the Lego elements and which color they made in. Yeah. Uh, and he loves minifix, so he always put the minifix on the layouts and make those small scenes that make it interesting to look at. Uh, I may be the most creative one, I always have a lot of ideas. Sometimes I have too many ideas and yes. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, it had happened more than one time that I have started uh, building a lot uh, on the planning and then I have a problem with that building technique and I say, oh, Blessing, can you help me with this uh, building technique? And then you yeah, take a walk, build what I asked for, and also the rest of the building. Okay. Because I'm so interested when I was starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well, you have done several models together. I also uh, know the difference in the mocks when you build separately. Uh, Lasse, you seem to have a big interest in history and architecture. Is that where all of your inspiration comes from? Uh, yes, I'm very interested in history and historical architecture. Uh, I have also built modern architecture sometimes, but I prefer to build old architecture. Which is very clear from what is on display on the whole. Yes. Uh, I like to build creations which teach history. Uh, yes, and this year in Skærbæk I have some buildings with me. I have built uh, 21 buildings in 21 different historical architectural styles. Uh, I, I have 18 of them with me in Skærbæk this year. Uh, each, uh, each model is built on just one base plane. Instead of building a big layout in just one specific style, I decided I want to build uh, many small buildings in many different historical architectural styles. I did that because I want to build as many different styles as possible. Yeah. You have also built some very interesting models with a lot of compartments or different scenes, like the history of the world that you showed here in Skjærbæk a few years ago, the life of Jesus, which was here last year, along with the fairy tales of H.C. Anderson, which was a collaboration. These are all big hits for the audience it shows. What do you think makes, makes these kinds of models so interesting to people? Uh, they all uh, tell a story. Uh, it, they tell a well-known story, uh, so people can recognize the story. Uh, and uh, many of my models also has a part of education in it. So when uh, people are looking at my creations, uh, the parents can teach their children about uh, history or or some of the old things and the uh, life of Jesus and the uh, ancestral Anderson's fairy tales. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, your specialty, Ahmed, uh, seems to be commenting on society, often in abstract ways, building mocks that make people think. The latest story, for example, is on display here. Uh, four family members on their smartphones while sitting at the dinner table. Uh, and your previous big piece was a jigsaw puzzle with scenes where minifigures in various ways struggle to fit in. What kind of response do you get when you show these at, at exhibitions? When I show this uh, compared with other models, the comments are more like, oh, this is art, this is real art, and they think they are different from the other models. Yeah. Do you, you think it sort of they can relate to what, what, you're, what you're showing? Yes, uh, I, I show a problem, uh, not because I have a solution for the problem, but, but they recognize the problem. Yeah. I have to mention in particular the piece that you exhibited here in Skjærbæk a few years ago, Lego Fan in South City. Uh, for those in the audience who haven't seen it, uh, it's a completely monochrome uh, city scene with where everything is black, white and grey, apart from a Lego builder and his room which is in full colour. Uh, it's a stunning model. Can you tell us how you came up with the idea and how it was received when you showed it? It was uh, one day my work had changed, so it was not so interesting as it has been. So I was really looking forward to come home and work with my Lego bricks. Maybe also looking forward to the next Lego event. And, and then I thought, how can I express this feeling in a, in a model? And uh, I, when I went home, I discussed it with Lassen, Lamia, and then it's to this model. Uh, I think that 
I had got two comments, two type of comments from this one. One's about the colors. When I showed it on the internet, people saw that I had used Photoshop. Photoshop yeah. Yes, but I haven't got that. Yeah. It surprised me. And uh, when I showed it at the family day, family days at the at the Lego factory, then there was the uh, kids there who said, "Oh, this is how Lego bricks looks in the old days." Because they played with the black and white photos. That was very fun. But of course, also uh, many have comments on the idea of the model. But they understand what you're trying to yes, show. Yes, and, and they, they could recognize the feeling yeah. that they have the same feeling. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the models that you built, both of you, are big models, literally in more ways than one, um, in, uh, in the past year. You were part of the group that built the models for the big exhibition in the Danish Center of Architecture in Copenhagen. Big, in this case, meaning Doc Eagles Group, the architecture company behind the Lego house. And out of 24 models, you built a full fourth, so six buildings in total. What was that experience like, being part of a group of international builders for an exhibition that is more than just Lego? Yeah, uh, I always like to, to participate in those public buildings because it's fun to be together with all other elephants and we can be better, better and more. And in an international project, we can be even better, even more buildings. Yes. Uh, I hope that I could be uh, with more of the elephants, uh, but that has not been the right, so everyone could be there for installation and things. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, when we put the models, when we uh, when we uh, set them up yeah. uh, in the Danish architecture center, there was an architect behind the real uh, real buildings, and we talked to them, and it was very interesting to talk to them because uh, it's not only in Lego bricks; it's, it's difficult to to be uh, turning the buildings without right angles. They actually face some of the same challenges. Yeah, yes, yes. and it was very fun to yeah. talk to them. That's very really cool. Uh, I know you spent a lot of time sorting, and uh, seeing what you've done with the bricks, you must spend a lot of time building as well. So, in an average day, how much time would you say you spend on Lego? Uh, we use around two hours every evening, and in the weekends and holidays, we are using a lot more time. So, that means that, uh, you, that this is your only hobby? Almost. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, there is a third member of your household, uh, Mr. Vistagol, uh, who has not been bitten by the Lego bug. And he thinks all the bricks take up a bit too much space, which is understandable considering you have two rooms full of Lego. Uh, I have to ask, do you keep any of these models? Uh, when we have exhibited our creations a number of times, uh, we separate them and use uh -huh. the brakes for all operations. Okay. We have to do that because legal brakes are very expensive, so we have to reuse the brakes for all operations. Okay, and that probably also makes it easier for Mr. Vestigal to, to accept that there's legal uh, No, no. <laughs> in the beginning, we only had legal in two rooms, but now we have too much legal to have it all in just two rooms, so we also have legal in some of the other rooms. Okay, this but, but there's still many rooms in our house. Where we still don't have Lego yet. Oh, we don't have Lego in our living room, kitchen, or bathroom. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> so, that means it was an old interview where I asked why you, why you said that you only had two. Yes. Okay. My, my dad, he hates Lego. He said you have too much Lego. Okay, okay. But he still accepts it. I mean, it's, it's okay. You get to go to these places. That's fine. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he can stop you. <laughs> he can stop us. <laughs> so, finally, Lasse. You're also quite the collector. Uh, you have many of the early wooden Lego toys. Yes. Uh, some example, early examples of the plastic toys that were not bricks. Uh, early Lego sets, a lot of rare or hard to find items. Uh, back in that same article that made you Nerd of the Week, uh, Anameta said that you had a dream of opening a Lego museum. Do you still, do you still like to do that? Uh, as a child, I wanted to open a Lego museum. Back then, there was no Lego museum here in Denmark, and I thought it was strange. But today there's a Lego museum in Lego House, therefore there's no longer a need for that I own a Lego museum. Uh, but I'm thinking about that I maybe should start to exhibit some of my collection at Lego events as I did uh, 10 years yeah. ago when I started participating in uh, Lego exhibitions. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for coming both of you.